Holy Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and God, Amen. May the Lord bestow upon us His blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom now and ever to the age of ages. Amen. Today is the second Sunday of the Great and Blessed Lent, um, the Temptation Sunday, as we just read the Gospel. And um, if if you were following actually all the three Gospels of, of the day, starting from last night and then this morning, and then what, what we just read today, um, uh, are related to the, ten the three sections of the Gospels that describe the temptation of the Lord. <clears throat> so we just read Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 4, and then last night um, we read uh, Mark chapter 1, and then this morning in Matthew we, we read from Luke chapter 4. <clears throat> and uh, as the church kind of prepares us for this, um, according to the book of Sirach, which says, my child, when you come to serve the Lord, prepare yourself for testing or temptation. <clears throat> and so when we begin the Lent, and in some other churches, this is the first Sunday um, gospel um, relating to, to the temptation. Uh, when we come to start um, anything good, especially when it comes to the fasting, then the devil is right there to tempt us, just like in, we, we just read with the Lord Jesus Christ himself. <clears throat> and some people think he was only tested these three times, but most likely this was the culmination of it. Um, uh, because uh, as, as we just read, <clears throat> said he was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. So this was the goal, is to be tempted and to overcome the temptation for us. Um, <clears throat> and then it says he had fasted 40 days, and after that he was hungry. Most likely he was tempted during those 40 days. And then the devil came with these three, um, most likely towards the end. Um, because it says that he was fasted 40 days, and then it describes this temptation, and Matthew and Luke also does the same. And then um, after, it says the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Um, and then he begins his ministry. <clears throat> uh, so when it comes to temptation, oftentimes it is the will of God for us, and there's many benefits that we can have from it. Uh, today, we're not going to go into all of the, the depths of, of the reasons, but just to name a few, it strengthens my will and aligns it with God's will. It increases my knowledge of God and even knowledge of myself. Um, I experience or I taste the grace and the strength and the comfort from God. Um, it stirs me to run to God and to cleave to Him in prayer. <clears throat> it reminds me of God's presence or the need for God's presence. And finally, it humbles me and protects me. From, from other sins. <clears throat> so um, those are some of the benefits of, of the temptation. <clears throat> um, what are, and because the devil recognizes all of these great benefits, he fights us even harder. Um, some people think uh, the temptation is for the weak, but no, the, if someone who is weak, the devil doesn't need to fight against. They're already, um, they're already gonna mess things up on their own. But for the one who is strong or getting stronger, that's the, the one devil the devil is afraid of. Um, <clears throat> and that's why he, he, um, he works hard and fights against that person. And with the Lord Jesus Christ, who was perfect and um, did not submit to any temptation, um, even though he was tempted in all points like with us, but without sin, then the, the devil didn't know what to do with him. And probably through everything in his book, about temptation and nothing stuck, nothing worked. Um, <clears throat> but what is the devil's goal? He wants to destroy us. He wants us to lose our salvation. Um, and um, how does he do that? He has many different ways, um, which we have to be aware of. <clears throat> um, and so we have to have a plan. And, and oftentimes when, when we start the fast, or when we start to do something good, or even today, when we're starting to describe the, the wiles of the devil, of course he's going to be there to fight against us. <clears throat> so we have to have a plan. What is the plan? We'll just talk about those four points. Um, uh, P for push, L for learn, A for aid, and N for never do. So <clears throat> the first point is we have to push ourselves hard um, and to press on, as St. Paul says. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So fasting means pushing, right? Um, we can't be easy on ourselves. 
when it comes to the fast and when it comes to struggling against sin. <clears throat> As St. Paul says, we do not war against flesh, for the weapons of the warfare are not carnal, not physical, but they are mighty in God for, for bringing every thought into captivity of, of Christ. But it, what does it do? How is it mighty? It pulls down strongholds, it casts down arguments, of, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So um, when we go into this warfare, we need protection, we need armor, we need the sword of the spirit. <clears throat> Um, and the first thing that we learn is that no matter what, we have to resist. As St. James says in his epistle, resist the devil and he will flee from you. The Lord did not give in at all. Uh, that's the last point, but we'll, we'll talk about that in, in, in a minute. Um, <clears throat> but St. John Chrysostom said, if then it is warfare, if such are the forces arrayed against us, if the principalities are incorporeal, just imagine all of the demons just ready to fight you. And this is actually what St. Anthony was able to see that for a period of time in his uh, fight with, with the devil in the wilderness. <clears throat> he says, if there are rulers of the world, if they are spiritual hosts of wickedness, how, tell me, can you live in self-indulgence? Self-indulg- how can you be licentious? How, if we are un- unarmed, shall we be able to overcome? Of course, we can't be victorious if we don't have any protection and any armor, any um any uh, any devices to use against the tricks of the evil. <clears throat> um, so we need to push ourselves and keep a, ourselves busy with the good things and, and, and at least recognize that there is a war. One of the tactics of the devil is to get us to ignore the fact that there is a battle for our soul or even that he exists or that he is fighting. Um, <clears throat> And of course, if we don't believe that there is um, a war or that there is an enemy, we're not going to fight. We're going to relax. Um, <clears throat> so that's the, the first point. The second point is to learn from our mistakes. Um, and and uh, any time where there is a battle or even a, a, a sports event or a game, um, if you have a very difficult opponent, to overcome, you have to do your homework. Not only do you push yourself in in, in growing in in strength and um, understanding, but you also have to understand n- not just the game, but your opponent. And so just like um, a, a team that's preparing themselves for um, a, that's their biggest opponent, they watch footage of their opponent and also maybe previous games that they played that same opponent, what they did right, what they did wrong, um, what the tactics of their opponent was so that they can be more ready for the next time and learn from their mistakes. Um, So we have to come up sometimes with a strategy for the next time we fall into sin if we've already fallen, right? And, And to see with our coach or our father of confession what can we do? What do we need to do differently? What do we need um, to keep the same? And what we need to strengthen by the grace of God? <clears throat> the more we do this, the better we become at uh, overcoming. We might not win the game, um, but we could. Uh, we persist and, and um, we continue to strategize and fix what we can, and ask God to strengthen us to do the rest. <clears throat> um, even though sometimes. Like the coach will give advice to the players in practice that sometimes have nothing to do with with the game itself. It's just conditioning or strength training or t- team building, right? S- same thing. Sometimes your father of confession or your spiritual guide will give us you advice in the spiritual life and say, what does this have to do with my sin? What does this have to do with my life? I don't see the connection. Do it anyway. Be- even the, the obedience and the submission that has to do with that God will see and reward you. But sometimes we don't see the connection, but it exists. Um, <clears throat> if anything, God will look upon our desire and, and our struggle, and he will reward us with, with success um, at one point in time. <clears throat> but we need to persevere. Um, so um, one of the tactics that the devil uses is to question our relationship 
with God or the, the fact that God is going to be with us despite this. Um, the devil in twice here, um, he, he started with, um, with a phrase before he asked him to do anything. What was it? He said, if, if you are the son of God, then do this, right? And, and so here he's trying, um, this is not just a, a question, but, but he's, what, he's getting to his identity. Um, and, and sometimes the devil fights us in the same way. <clears throat> like if we fall or if we sin or if we feel weak, oh, I thought you were Christian. I thought you had God's strength. Don't you have the Holy Spirit? Where is God with you now? Right? So, so then he's beginning to, quest to question him. Why? Because he wants us to stop trusting in God, to stop asking or to stop doing the things that God is telling or the church is telling us to do. Right? Because he wants us to be even weaker. So um, <clears throat> we have to realize that, you know, fasting or the spiritual struggle is not just about doing one, two, three, but um, it's, it's about growing closer to God. And even if we do one, two, three, four, five, and we don't feel anything, or we don't see any progress, or our problem is not solved, we still believe in God, and we still still do all those things. Um, <clears throat> just like the three holy youth, when um, they uh, were questioned by Nebuchadnezzar, um, said, we're going to fast. Um, are you going to throw us in the fire? Okay. Um, God can save us from the fire, I'm paraphrasing. But if he doesn't, he's still God and we're still going to worship him. So they were still like slightly unsure that God was going to deliver them from the fire. It didn't really matter if he, 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 he delivered them from the fire or not. Like St. Paul says, of course, it was God's providence for us to learn and to benefit from this. But <clears throat> like St. Paul says, if we live, we live for the Lord. If we die, we die for the Lord. Whether we live or die, we're for the Lord. Right? So it doesn't matter. that <laughs> some Sometimes the circumstances that we're really asking for might not matter in our spiritual life. Um, and even if they do, um, we're submitting to God's will and God's divine plan. And he might not want us to succeed. Like overcoming a sin, of course, it's God's will. But we might not do it tomorrow. We, we struggle against sin, but we might not overcome today. Um, the point is that we struggle and we put it in God's hands and we ask him to deliver us. <clears throat> so we do our part and... and we're at the end of the day, we're in God's hands. Um, <clears throat> so, so that's why the, the, the devil was getting, trying to get him to question his relationship with God, um, even though he's one with God the Father. He didn't, he didn't fully understand this, of course. Um, <clears throat> and so um, even Adam and Eve experienced the same temptation, right? From the very beginning, the devil was using um, this tactic. After God gave them everything they needed and told them that they could live forever with him, as long as they wanted to, um, just eat, avoiding from this one tree. The tempter came and said, what? Has God really told you um, if you shall not eat of every the tree of the garden? Um, in the other ones, he was tempting them uh, or Eve to think that, are, are you sure God uh, has your best interest at heart? Um, are you sure he didn't forget you? Are you sure he's not lying to you? Right. So he, he was trying to get her to question God's intentions and God's love and God's relationship with the person. Um, don't Let's not fall into this um, uh, mistake, regardless of the circumstances. Okay? Um, <clears throat> and so um, this is the way that um, we learn from our experiences. And hopefully um, we might fall into a certain mistake at one point and then later realize, oh, I, I messed up at this point, and at this point, and at this point. And so next time, so well, when we, we have to learn, right? So what can I do differently um, so that I don't fall in, in, in the same mistakes? Um, the, the wiser, the smarter, the, we, we won't fall, fall into all of the same mistakes at the same time next, the next time around. Um, the third point is to get help or to get assistance. Um, and God's goal for us is to help us in tribulation and temptation. As St. Paul says in the Hebrews in chapter 2 and chapter 4, um, St. Paul says <clears throat> in 2.18, he says, For in that he himself has suffered, being tempted, 
he is able to aid those who are tempted, right? So Christ was tempted to show us, you know, the way out of temptation, but also to give us the power um, to overcome temptation as well, as St. Paul says. And then in chapter 4, he says, uh, verse 15, he says, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Um, <clears throat> so he said, okay, I did it. I succeeded in this way. Um, use me. Um, uh, and this is the means by doing it, by prayer, by fasting, by scripture, by trusting in you. <clears throat> okay, and again, we won't, we won't um, necessarily be victorious the first time around, um, but we have our whole life to learn from, from this and to get help from it. <clears throat> um, uh, Dorotheus of Gaza, um, a nice desert father who, who talks about this, he says, do not allow a passion to harden into a habit. So in the beginning, we're tempted with something, but we might not fall into it, or we might commit a sin once, but it's not necessarily a habit. He says, he uses the verse, um, uh, or the psalm that has to do with dashing these little ones against the rock, right? And he says, these little ones are the little sins that start small. He says, do not allow them to, to harden into a habit. He says, we must go on fighting and praying uh, to God all night and day, lest we fall into temptation. If we get beaten, as men we shall, and slip into sin, let us quickly get up again and do penance, weeping in the sight of God's goodness. Let us be on the watch and go on fighting. And God, seeing our goodwill, our humility, and our contrition, will lend us a hand and extend his mercy to us. Um, so that's, in a nutshell, is the summary of our uh, struggle against sin, right? We, we fall, get up, we ask for help, and, and God in his mercy will see us in our struggle with our good intentions, and he will lend us a hand. <clears throat> he will give us this aid. Um, but sometimes the aid doesn't necessarily come um, directly from God. It comes through um, our brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, <clears throat> one time, the same, the same the face of God, he talks about um, when, the, when all the monks gathered for the holy psalmody or the midnight praise, <clears throat> um, it's it's a difficult task, especially for for the monks back then, to wake up early and to pray every night um, or at midnight. Um, and so there's usually a monk that comes around. Even nowadays, they use the bell to wake them up. Um, uh, and but anyways, they they were he was at, attending the service. And one of the monks saw a vision of an angel coming around with with some holy oil and anointing um, the place or the person um, that was had he anointed some and he left some alone um, and didn't anoint them. <clears throat> and even in an empty space where there was supposed to be a monk, sometimes he anointed that place and sometimes he didn't. So it's like, what's going on? <laughs> so um, uh, he asked. Uh, so then the angel explained, why am I doing this? And he said, those who came with a willing heart and attentiveness, they are the ones that were anointed. The ones that were there for the wrong reasons were not attentive, were not getting anything out of the service. Um, they were not blessed. Um, well, then why did you bless the empty spaces? of? of so, well, so those are the ones of, of the monks who couldn't attend, but because of sickness, or some other very good reason, like out of obedience or something, they couldn't make it, but they still have their blessing. Um, <clears throat> and so um, he took this. Okay, we have to we have to attend. This is bad. That was his um, his, his message. Um, but then he got sick, and after he got sick, um, they gave him a very big responsibility um, in, in the guest house, so he couldn't um, he, he couldn't always wake up in time. Even the monk that would come to wake up, he would say, okay, I'm getting up and I'm going to fall asleep again. So he learned from his lesson. What did he do? He got another brother that said, okay, I need you to help me wake up, wake me up. Um, <clears throat> and um, he, he would wake up, make sure he got to church. And then he had another monk next to him. He's like, if I fall asleep during the service, wake me up. <laughs> um, so um, this, this is like... the. Uh, of course, maybe we can't do this physically, but the idea that, okay, if I need help, I should, I should come to the church. 
I, I, I can ask my, my brothers and sisters in a way to help encourage me. If you find me uh, cussing or whatever, tell me to stop. Um, or, or just remind me that, that I'm in, on the wrong path. <clears throat> right? um, the same idea is like, this helps us push, which is the first point. Like, you know the story of St. Pashoi when he was trying to pray all night and he didn't have someone to help him, but he tied his hair on, uh, with a rope on, in the ceiling to wake him up every time he was tied. This, this is the, the way that we get assistance um, and we learn from our mistakes and we push ourselves. So the three points um, are related. <clears throat> the last point is to never give up or never give in. Um, and I think that that point is most reflective in a few weeks, when we read from the gospel, uh, the paralytic man who was at the pool for for years and years and years and decades, about 38 years, right? Um, <clears throat> and um, uh, as it says in the Vespers of that gospel, men ought to always pray and not lose heart. We should always do what is good and not lose hope. Um, <clears throat> because those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength, as the book of Isaiah says. Um, I'll end with... Uh, a uh, quote that I usually don't do, but um, Winston Churchill, um, one of the leaders during the time of World War I, even before America joined, um, was famously quoted his, his he went to his, uh, one of his school, um, I think it was a graduation, and he, he had a very short speech, but this quote was, was attributed to him where he says, never, never, never give Actually, people say give up, but he actually said never give in. Um, it, nothing great or small, large or petty. Never give in except to convictions of honor and good sense. Um, so this is what you have to remember during the fast. This is what we have to remember in our spiritual struggle. Don't give in except for to something big, um, <clears throat> whether small or big. Um, and, and that applies for... And when did he say this? He didn't say this after the war. He said after the first 10 months when Britain was like almost destroyed by, by the Nazis. Um, and before even America joined the war, he, he preached this to his people. Um, <clears throat> and surely enough, as we know the history, um, they were victorious. Um, <clears throat> he said, we stood all alone a year ago. He said this. Um, and then he said, we can be sure that we have only to persevere in order to conquer. Um, of course, we don't always quote this, but... Um, this is our enemy, right? The devil is our enemy that's fighting, and it's evil, and we don't always feel victorious, especially in the beginning, in the middle of the war, but um, we know how the end should be, and we know that we have this enough strength to be victorious because the strength does not come from us, but from God. Um, <clears throat> so if you feel that these two weeks are tough, you know, the next few weeks are gonna be probably even tougher, um, but, um, we can persevere in the little tests and then God will give us bigger tests and, and the devil will come and probably give us bigger temptations. But that's okay because at the end of the day, um, uh, we're stronger and, and, uh, and we're more victorious by the grace of God. Um, <clears throat> it's kind of like if you imagine uh, a person who is um, exercising, right? And or, or you, you need a personal trainer or you need someone to spot you when you're lifting something heavy, right? Um, but if if the trainer sees you lifting something heavy, is he going to lift it up for you right away? Like sometimes we expect God to take away a problem right away when we ask. So no, he has to leave you to struggle as much as you can. Even if you're turning blue in the face, he's going to leave you. Uh, except for when it falls on you and it's it, 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 like he doesn't want it to, to harm you in any way. Um, or when he knows for sure you can't do it, then he will lift it up for you. So, so God does it like this. God knows exactly how much we can lift and how much we can't. And even if we're blue in the face, he's, he's going to let us struggle. Um, but if we really, truly cannot do it, then he will either take it away or give us the strength. Um, so that's what we have to realize when we're in, in the midst of the temptation. Our our mind and heart will say, no, 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 I can't do this. But we say, but by the grace of God, he will give me the strength um, to, to overcome. Because he had, he's the one who has overcome everything uh, for us um, and through us. Glory be to him.
Jebeni